Some time ago, I had the dubious pleasure of meeting William Hague and Michael Howard at a private audience at work. No journalists were present. We were allowed to ask questions, and the question I put to them, it was just before the 1997 election, was why are MPs not included in the list of people to whom the Corruption Act applies? Because there's, there's a list of people mentioned at the beginning of the Act and you're not on it. I'd noticed that MPs were specifically excluded from the list which was at the beginning of the Act uh, to whom the Act was supposed to apply. So presumably that meant that MPs could feel free to um, be as corrupt as they wanted. William Haig, as I remember, looked rather blank. Michael Howard started muttering about the Nolan report. I told him I had read it and I didn't think it would be an effective tool to combat corruption. As we walked towards the coffee urn, William Haig walked next to me and I said, people aren't going to vote for you because they believe you to be corrupt. I remember William Haig said, I know they think that and we'll show them that it's not true. I said, you can't do that because it is true. Now, fairly recently, the corruption came um, to the surface when the Telegraph did an investigation. The image of the duck house, which taxpayers paid for, is an enduring one. And there was a house-flipping saga and many instances of downright fraud. But that's all behind them now, and according to some newspapers, it's business as usual. MPs continue to fleece the public at every opportunity. But what I want to talk about today is specifically the granny tax, tax allowances for the over 65s, which are to be phased out, quote, to simplify the system. The money saved is to go to the super wealthy, who have had the honour very recently, we're told, of dinner with Samantha and David. Pensioners are also getting a record increase in the basic state pension in just a couple of weeks' time. Uh, over five pounds a week. Hello, is there anybody there? George, are you there? Well, the dog ruined that bit of theatre, but never mind. The point is really that I think George has been having a little bit too much cocaine because does he not realise, has he not been to the supermarket recently? Does he not realise that five pound a week is not going to cover the inflation that there's been because there's been a lot more than 5% inflation. The figures are just a fraud like everything else that comes out of the government. Pensioners are on a fixed income, George. You just don't get it, do you? So what can we do about it? Well, I've got one or two suggestions. Bring in regular drugs testing for the politicians. That's my first suggestion, because half of them are on cocaine, it seems to me, and it takes away their judgment. White powder seen variously on the table in front of them is said to be cocaine. Natalie Rowe is adamant that she did not take drugs that night because she was carrying her son. I mean, it's been said in the papers that he was at university. He wasn't. At the time, he was working for William Hague. I remember that vividly, because he called William Hague insipid, and I didn't know what the word meant. I do now. So there was, def there was cocaine on, that on, that, on the table. George Osborne did take cocaine on that night, and not just on that night. He took it on a regular basis with me, with his friends. There are more witnesses, not just me, that witnessed George Osborne taking cocaine. So, it's, you know, there are other people out there that know the truth. Um, he, um, I remember vividly that on that particular night he um, had taken a line and I said to George, um, jokingly, that when you're Prime Minister one day I'll have all the dirty goods on you. And he laughed and took a big fat line of cocaine. So what's my second suggestion for our hon honourable members of Parliament? Well, it's even more important really. They need to buy their own food and pay their own bills. In all the furore over the expenses saga, the main issue was missed, and that was the fact, 
that MPs don't buy food out of their salaries like everybody else. Food for MPs is just an expense. They don't have to look at the price of the food and that's why people like George Osborne can make asinine comments about pensioners getting a record £5 a week extra. Those of you who've heard my other videos know that I always like to look at the big picture. So how does the targeting of pensioners fit into the big picture? Pensioners are under attack by the government. The fact that some middle-income pensioners own a home after a lifetime of work, it has to be said, um, is the reason why politicians are trying to vilify pensioners and make them scapegoats for problems caused by their banking pals. Remember that Cameron is, uh, comes from a banking family and he is a friend of the bankers. Cameron trots out that horrible man, David Willits, every time they want to chip a bit more off a pensioner's small fixed income. Why are they doing this? Agenda 21, that's why. The New World Order wants an end to property ownership and what they're trying to do is drive middle-income pensioners into poverty so that they can then steal their homes by equity release schemes. If you are not aware of all this, you really need to read up Agenda 21, which comes from the United Nations. Yes, Agenda 21 is going to destroy our lives. And meanwhile, our MPs are busy feathering their own nest, playing up to the global elite who want to implement this uh, policy through the United Nations. Um, so I've got one message for you, George. And that is, I'm offering you a new ringtone for your iPhone. And here it is. Ah.